So let's have a lesson on this rondo by Carulli. This comes from my grade four repertoire lessons book. There's a link for that underneath the video, but watch the video for free if you already have the piece and you can learn all the tips for it. So in my book, there's a couple of pages of lesson material before we actually have a performance edition, um, just to help you prepare for the piece. So today I'm gonna to discuss what I go over on those pages. So um, there's nothing too new about this piece in terms of guitar technique from grade three. It's just a lot more active than any piece we've approached before in my education series of books. This piece um, is just very active, but we're gonna talk a lot about textures in music. So um, arpeggios versus melodic material and how they sometimes mix together. We're also gonna talk about the form of the piece a little bit, what a rondo is, and a little bit about right hand fingering as well. So a rondo is where a theme repeats itself in the piece. In this particular piece, this opening section, comes back three times. And then there's contrasting sections mixed in with that. So I call that theme the A section and I have rehearsal marks on the score. And the form of the piece or the section order is A, the A section, the theme, then B, contrasting, C, contrasting, A again, the theme, D, so a contrasting section, E, contrasting section, and then A one last time at the end. So that theme keeps coming back, and that's a rondo. It's the form of a rondo. Now, in terms of textures, let's just talk about that. Sometimes you're playing scales or melodic material, and sometimes you're playing arpeggios. And when you're playing arpeggios, you wanna keep your fingers down to let it all sustain. So for example, in the opening section, you have a scale, and then you have arpeggios. So when you have arpeggios, it's like a chord, right? So you wanna let everything ring out. When you have a scale, you're just playing a normal legato scale passage. You don't have to overthink any of this. Play as legato as possible, and when you think you should let notes ring, let them ring. But if you want to take a closer look, you can, you can do that. So for example, in, in, so in the opening section, we have a scale passage, then arpeggios. Those are two different arpeggios, a G chord, then a, a minor seven chord, and then another G chord, then a scale passage, A chord, a D minor seven chord, G, scale, arpeggio, 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 scale, and then it's kind of mixed. This is, this is kind of a C chord, but it has a passing tone or a non-chord tone, which is that D. So E and C are a chord. D is not part of the chord, but it's just a passing tone along to C. So that'd be like a mixed texture. It has both a scale passage and an arpeggio mixed together. And that's kind of true at all times. Most of the time when you have melodic material, it's in the context of a chord or an arpeggio. So we never want to, want to say like, oh, we're only playing scales or we're only playing arpeggios. There could be melodies present at all time. There could be the two textures mixed together at all times. Um, that's just the nature of music. It's really um, diverse in that way. So um, in bar 9 to 12, for example, though, you really want to know that you're playing an arpeggio. If you didn't know that, you might play it like this. You know, playing one note at a time lifting your fingers off in the left hand, but we should be thinking of this as a D chord, right? Letting it all sustain. See how all my fingers remain down? So when it's an arpeggio texture, you want to keep your fingers down so everything sustains as a chord. And although we run out of strings sometimes when we're playing notes, this is an A7 chord. And yes, we have to cover up the open E with the G here, but it's still an A7 chord. So you let it ring as much as possible. It's not always possible to let every note ring because we run out of strings, but nevertheless, we let it ring as much as we can. And then we have a mixed passage, which is an arpeggio, uh, but also a scale passage. Also 
also a mixed passage. It's a chord passage, but nevertheless, it has melodic scale pass uh, material in it. Um, other parts in the piece, um, you might think it's just an arpeggio, but there could be also a melody really present. So for example, in bars 34 to 38, you have this contrasting section. That sounds like arpeggios. And it is. But there's a little melody in there, right? So you, do you hear that melody? Just It's nice and simple. So there, there can always be these hidden little melodies. And again, you don't have to overthink this. You just have to be open and receptive to it. You have to be listening for it and trying to get as much out of the piece as you possibly can. You want to um, listen to what you're doing. At first, you might just be moving your fingers and trying to learn the, the fingerings and stuff, but you should be investigating the music at all times and saying, can I let this ring as a chord? Does it sound good if I let it ring as a chord? And you don't need music theory to do that. Either sounds good or it doesn't. Um, I, I mean, a good teacher will correct you if you do something strange, but nevertheless, like you just want to investigate and make sure you're listening and open and receptive to it. And I don't have all the answers. I don't know if that's the melody that Karuli necessarily wanted in that section, but it sounds like it is, and I, I feel like it is. And when I listen to it, it sounds good to me. So that kind of investigation and experimentation while you're playing the piece will really pay off musically. And if you're more at like, if you're finding like grade f the grade four material a bit of a struggle, you certainly want to make sure that when it sounds like a chord, you're letting it ring out and you're not going, you know, making it detached. That's something that you um, will, should just notice from a purely legato standpoint, right? So let's do a quick walkthrough of the piece. Right hand fingering is a little important. And I've added some, um, quite a bit of fingering in the first section, and then you should apply that to the rest of the piece. So for example, I open up with M, A, M, A. That way P and M and I are available for the arpeggios that follow. M, A, M, A. So if it's possible, you, you want to end some of those scale passages on the A finger so that I and M are available for the next passage, so you don't repeat fingers. Sometimes it's inevitable that we repeat fingers, but in this piece it's actually pretty possible almost all the time to not repeat fingers, to insert a different finger at the top of all these scale passages. So like in bar 4, you can use I M, but I end with an A finger, that way P and M are available for the next notes. So it's about thinking ahead and saying like, oh, if I play this finger there, these fingers are available for the next note. And I've marked that in the score, but not always. Later, when the sections start repeating themselves, um, you can use the same fingerings that you saw in the first section, but you want to think about it a little bit. Um, so from that bar four, Cadential passages like that one right there in bar seven, you definitely want P M, P um, and then sorry M I M I P N M. Um, because you want that, you have to make sure that just before P A M I M I M I M that you end up with appropriate fingers. So into the B section. playing 
this section, just don't, don't let go of your bass notes. Just be careful that you're actually holding them down for the value they're indicated. So that might seem like a little bit of a stretch to some of you, but just make sure you, you relax and, and your hand is in a good position. The thumb's kind of behind the second finger down a little bit. That way you can hold on to that bass note while playing the melodic material around it. passage here and I use M A M I M M A that way I can end with M I so a little some finicky little um, fingerings but for the most part just alternate um, and then if, if you're having trouble so just make sure you're following my tiny suggestions at specific times C section Also, there'll be occasional times where you have to use the fourth finger, that way the third finger is available for the bass notes, right? Here, switch to P A, P M A. So when it's on the inner strings, I use I M often. If it's on the outer strings, I use M A. section again. This is the rondo, the, re the theme, right? Um, that passage actually, I am, I am, I am, I, and then A. So you're back into the arpeggios. Same as before. For the D section, I would go a little bit softer, a little bit more tosto. out that melody that we talked about, that simple melody. section a little bit more extroverted you can use the same finger you could use P I the whole time there I alternate the fingers there like P I P M P I P M but it doesn't really matter if you use P I the whole time that's also totally acceptable section just keep it flowing keep it legato let the chords ring and then you just have the a section one more time the theme Don't feel rushed there. Don't um don't clip any of the notes by going like um you know being feeling jolty. It's the end of the piece. You can start relaxing a little bit. Relax. And this is just a little tag on coda kind of ending. And then you're done. So um, in some ways, it's a very straightforward piece. There's no new techniques. There's no barre or anything like that. But it's very active. And there's some right hand fingering stuff that's um, very specific. Or it's specific enough that it will help you a lot to avoid repeated fingers. And so 
when we approach the grade four level, we're just looking at increased complexity, not necessarily any new techniques so much, but just increased um, activity and, and complexity. And there's more opportunities for error, but nevertheless, as always, practice slowly. Harder pieces take a longer period of time to accomplish, so you just take longer and make sure you learn it correctly and learn it securely and that you feel confident, and then you'll be ready to play the piece.